good. Hopefully she's not broken. My name is Zach Ellis and welcome to my journey. I don't know where I'm going or how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to be tearing shit up every step of the way. Along with a few friends of course. Honestly, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll be building, modifying, repairing, fabricating, and racing every chance I get. <laughs> but if you enjoy this content, don't forget to smash the subscribe button and of course, enjoy the video. What's up guys, back out here with the SRT4 today. Today we're gonna start by uh, detailing the car. I've already washed the car, but I've got to run out to the store to get a new buffer pad for my buffer. Um, I can't for the life of me remember where I put it. We're gonna bring the car back here. Uh, I'm just gonna apply a coat of wax to the whole thing. So we're gonna do that, and then this is all for preps for tomorrow, which is a car show called Tacos and Tailpipes. Uh, I went to the show last year, it was a really good turnout, like a thousand cars. This year, I don't think it's going to be quite as good because the weather is looking a little rough. But either way, I would like to get the coat of wax on it and then we'll uh, head over to the car show tomorrow. So I'll uh, keep you guys posted.
All right, guys, so car is all waxed up. I washed it, I waxed it. Well, I washed it, I clay barred it, I waxed it. I used a 3M polish and then I applied a coat of Excuse me. Then I applied a coat of Chemical Guys Slick Coat, Wet Coat, Slick Slick Wax. Salmon, Simmon, Salt, Swanson, Swanson? Slick Shine, something slick. Some slick something made by Chemical Guys. Hydro Slick, that's what it was. Applied a coat of Hydro Slick. Um, it, I see, it seems like it works alright, I don't know. I followed the directions, so... We'll see. It's not going to rain for a few more hours, um, so hopefully that uh, helps it set on the car. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap today up, <clears throat> and then tomorrow will be the car show. As long as it's not raining super hard, I'm going to head over there and check it out. If it's raining too bad, I'll probably skip. It's like an hour or so from my house, so we'll uh, play that one by ear. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the morning. We are back in the garage. Supposed to go to a car show, but unfortunately the car is broke. I was woke up that morning to go to the car show. I uh, started driving. It was pretty rainy, so I went a little bit later. As I was cruising, I noticed my AFR gauge was peg lean. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what the issue was. Car was running completely fine. Uh, I ended up going home, going about my day, doing some other things. Then I took the car to my friend's shop to pick up my truck when it started to spit and sputter a little bit and then it threw the engine light. So the car was throwing a P0420 code which is a cat efficiency code. So I decided one thing I'm going to do to troubleshoot which I can't believe it didn't happen sooner if it was going to happen um, is the O2 spacer since I deleted the cat on the car. Uh, I plugged the cat uh, I plugged the O2 sensor right into the downpipe like it was from the factory without any spacer, no defoul or anything like that, and I never got a code um, until yesterday. So I don't know if maybe that's what the issue was. The weird thing was once the car started spitting and sputtering, it started running funky, uh, and then the engine light actually threw. After the engine light threw, maybe, I don't know, eighth mile later, the O2 sensor started reading again, or the uh, wideband, excuse me. So I don't know if maybe the the computer in the car, once it noticed that the cat was not there anymore, it started compensating the fuel delivery amount or what it was doing, but the O2 sensor started working again. So first thing I decided to do this morning was pick up a uh, defouler. Shout out to Matt for finding me the hookup. And then shout out, shout out to uh, Tony over at Freedom Motorsports. He let me purchase this off of them when well, they don't typically sell them. So that was pretty cool. So I'm going to start by, I'm going to go ahead and install this. It's not going to hurt to have it installed. Um, I've needed it anyway. So we're going to throw this in and then I'm probably just going to go ahead and do a boost te test to make sure that there's no major leak in the car, which there could be. I don't really know. So we're going to go ahead, hop right to this and then uh, we'll update you guys as we go. So we're using the Vibrant Performance O2 spacer. The cool thing about these spacers is this is the actual spacer. So you thread this into the exhaust and then your O2 sensor goes into here. Well, this is just a straight pass through design, but it comes with these little, uh, I guess you could call uh, jets, if you will. Basically what this is designed to do is limit how much exhaust gas you want to come through. So. A bigger one's gonna allow more gas get to your sensor. Smaller one's gonna limit that amount. And then you have a little C-clip that clips right into the end to retain this piece. So today I'm gonna use the smallest one. Um, if I need a bigger one, then I'll just remove the whole setup and 
put the different size in there, but for now we're gonna start with the smallest. Hopefully the smallest provides the best reading on the O2 sensor. I don't really care what the O2 sensor reads, I just don't want it to throw a code anymore. That's the only thing I care about. So we're gonna clip that in there and then we'll install it in the car. I just wanted to jump in here, since you guys have made it this far in the video, I just wanted to say I appreciate you guys sticking around. And uh, for those of you who are returning viewers or already subscribed, I appreciate the love. It really means a lot to me and it kind of keeps me going forward with the channel. Uh, for those of you who are tuning in but not subscribed, I want you guys to subscribe to the channel because you're not going to want to miss what's in store for the car in the future. Uh, to give you a little sneak peek, I'll show you real quick what some of the future steps are with the car. So the goal here is to squeeze 285s on this car. Hit the subscribe button and it'll be coming in a future video. I even scooped one of these little headlamp things the other day. Look at this thing. I might look like a dickhead, but this thing's the ticket. I'm telling you, y'all gotta get it. So this is the wideband O2 sensor. This is the downstream O2 sensor, which I've already moved, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the defouler and uh, we'll move back to the top side. Got it installed, so now back to the top side to try and do the boost test. And again, I'll reiterate, this headlight is the shit. Look, light off, I'll light on. Clark, what are you doing over there? Back to the top side, I'm gonna check on my dog, see what the hell he's doing. What are you doing? You alright? Why are you over there under the tire? Huh? What are you doing? You alright? You bored? Now I know you're the sleepiest dog ever. Right? This dog could sleep 24 7 if he had the option to. So, back to the top side. I'm gonna go ahead, uh, get my air compressor set up pull the intake pipe off and then start pressurizing the system to see if uh, there's anything noticeable. Um, hopefully there is, that'll make my life way easier, but if there isn't, then we're kind of just where we left off last time, right? So I did the leak test to see where the leak was coming from or if there was a leak. I found one leak and it's not big enough to cause any issues. It's this little port right here. I don't know if you can see that. Where the solenoids are. Well, the little cap is leaking. Um, it's not real bad. It's definitely leaking, but it's um, not big enough or fast enough to create any sort of issue especially not a crazy AFR gauge reading so I think we're good on the boost test I'm gonna go ahead and throw the intake back on I'm gonna clear the code start the car see if it idles the way it should if it does I might take the car out for a test spin just to see how it handles um, the thing that I don't understand is it was pegged lean then when the engine threw the engine light for the cat efficiency it started reading a little bit. I don't want to say it's reading normal, but it was reading something rather than just pegged red. Um, so I guess we'll throw the intake on, clear the code, start the car, and see if it idles normal. If it idles normal, I'm not going to dig any deeper. I'm just going to wrap this thing up. Um, I'm racing on Sunday, so maybe Friday I'll come get the car and rip it all Friday and Saturday just to see if I can get it to uh, repeat the issue again. 
if I can't, we'll call her fix with that O2 sensor bung and go from there. All right, so the car has been idling for a few minutes. It's gone 14.1 to 15.7-ish. So it, the AFR is not perfect, but it's not crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the car, clear the code, start it back up and see what it does. Code is cleared, let me pull the thing. Ugh. Let's turn the car off. And we'll start it back up and see what it does. Alright, well, car seems to be idling fine, um, AFRs seem decent enough. I'm going to go ahead, clean up the area a little bit, lower the car down, take it for a spin, and hopefully it doesn't uh, recreate the same issue again. spacer but it seems to be running again it's not running perfect but it's running better it, it the gauge is actually reading numbers rather than just being pegged out at 17 plus um, so I guess I'm gonna call this project complete I'm gonna take this thing back to the garage and wrap up the day I just hope that come Sunday when I go to race it doesn't give me any issues then which my luck it will but you never know I guess I guess the only issue was that uh, downstream O2 sensor finally recognized that there was no cat which was causing all kinds of issues like I was saying at the beginning as soon as my AFR started acting crazy shortly after that is when I got the cat efficiency code which it's been I don't know three months or something since I deleted the cat on this and I have not had any engine lights the AFR started going crazy a few miles later I finally got a check engine light and then the AFRs were still crazy but they weren't just pegged out 17 plus they were reading but kind of all over the place um, so I'm assuming when that code finally threw on the uh, engine light finally threw the computer started to combat having no cat which was pulling fuel out essentially to not destroy my catalytic converter so I think that O2 spacer is going to be 
the exact thing that I needed to try and mitigate this from happening in the future. Uh, it's a vibrant O2 spacer. It's like 40 bucks, so it's quality made. But I mean, for 40 bucks, and gives me it gives me a peace of mind, and I'm happy with that. So hopefully we don't have this issue ever again, and uh, I won't have to worry about missing the race next weekend. Uh, I did miss the car show, but that is what it is. I, at least my car is working. So other than that, I'm gonna wrap this thing up, and I will catch you guys in the next one.